This episode of Flight Camp is sponsored by Exalta. Your world, our coatings. Welcome to the Boneyard, everybody. Uh, this is kind of a cool area back here, and it's uh, a lot of times where I get to go when I'm needing a minute by myself. Um, I enjoy coming back here and seeing all the old projects that are uh, coming up. Um, some of these are client trailers, some of them are just personal projects. Uh, a lot of things, um, you know, waiting to be done. Every single one of them will get attention at some point, so don't fear. Uh, I know they look pretty dilapidated, but we know what they can become uh, in the end. So um, this is kind of cool. We're going to take you through each one today, just show you what we got back here. And, um, you know, hopefully you'll uh, follow us in the future and uh, see them all get uh, restored. Um, each one of them is special in its right. And so for all those people out there that are searching for a trailer, uh, you know, we may have it right back here. We've got a, a very large variety from, from very rare one-off trailers to um, canned hams, big and small of all sizes, to very, very rare finds such as the Airstream behind me. So we're gonna start at the uh, beginning of the boneyard today. Right next to the old fence is the 1950 Anderson. This is kind of a special trailer because um, We've seen some brochures and stuff on it, but a single axle, uh, small version of the 31 footer that we've done a couple times before. Um, it's a magnificent trailer. Uh, the finishes on the interior were very high end, rounded corners, uh, really beautiful. And it's really neat to see a 22, 24 foot single axle version of that. Still has the trolley vent windows on the sides. And uh, this one in particular is gonna go to a vintage travel trailer park. So we're building this one front to, front to back uh, for a uh, nice vintage rental. Um, it's gonna be pretty spectacular when it's done. Come on inside. So here we are on the interior of the 1950 Anderson. This is a single axle model. Really cool, I've never actually, actually seen one but I was able to purchase it in Colorado. And uh, so of course, single axle and Anderson, I jumped all over it. I love these trailers. Great, great finishes in here. They make a small trailer packed full of amenities. Um, it's got everything you need and the finishes in here are exceptional. Right down to where the table folds down out of the wall. Um, you know, just a lot of features that a canned ham trailer uh, doesn't have. Um, this was kind of very high end at the time. And a lot of this stuff is usable. Everything that we've got in here, we're gonna be able to salvage, you know, except for the paneling itself. We'll go ahead and dismantle it, rewire it, and, and put new paneling and stuff in. But all of this furniture is all reusable. Countertop is reusable and in great shape. So we're gonna keep the basic layout. We're gonna add some modern amenities, add a queen size bed to the back, which we've got room in and a toilet room. And this is gonna be a great little rental. So next up in the boneyard is the 48 Glider. This is a really special trailer because this is the first one that Sully went with me on as a pick. And man, we had a blast. Him and I got to go uh, a few hours away and pick this one up. It was given to us, entrusted uh, to us to uh, bring back and bring back to life. And that's exactly what him and I are gonna do. Uh, we're really busy at the shop, so we haven't gotten to it yet, but let me take you inside and show you some really cool features. So what I love about this trailer is that simple bread loaf design. It's the quintessential bread loaf 1940s trailer. A lot of companies back then were doing that same shape, you know, Silver Dome, Westwood, Westcraft, and then you had Glider. Gliders typically were quite a bit bigger than this, so it's kind of cool to see a, a small version of this. And everything, again, is great for either templating or reusing. It'll have a nice little bedroom back there. We're probably going to add a toilet room up here, and then we'll be able to salvage all of the appliances and just kind of replicate what uh, needs to be um, fixed in here, which is little bit of water damage here and there, but great bones and it's gonna be a great looking trailer when it's done. Next we have a 1948 Palace Royal. This to me is one of the most luxurious trailers that they made in that era. The stamped body panels and the trolley top on it. I mean, the work that went into this, and just in the engineering is mind boggling for the time. These are all pressed, hydro press panels and uh, when they're done, body worked and painted. They just look like cascading water. I mean, it's absolutely stunning, just beautiful. Let's go in and take a peek. So this trailer, the 1948 uh, Palace Royal, was another trailer that was entrusted to us um, to redo. A lot of people have seen um, you know, us online and seen the work we've done in the past, and they don't want to junk them or scrap them, so they call us 
and uh, we're fortunate enough to be able to go out and pick them up and then we find good homes for them and um, and put them back out on the road get to we get to preserve that history which is great um, this one in particular had a bathroom added to it years ago we're gonna take all that stuff out because it was kind of done poorly it was sitting in one spot and not towed around and we want to make sure that it's you know able to be road worthy uh, this one also had um, a masonite material on the roof that was all painted white from the factory. Um, one other one, Doreen and Bob Bergman's, uh, back east, they have this same style where it had the painted masonite on the top and then the wood down below. The one that we previously did, we did uh, wood from top to bottom. A cool feature in here is that these slide open and then this is a trolley section in the roof of this on the outside that has full air ventilation on each side all the way down. And so again, we'll find a good home for this, build it to uh, somebody's specs. You know, we want to keep the basic floor plan and the feel of it. We don't ever want to take that away from the trailer, but we want to make it fit them and uh, put some modern amenities that are hidden away really nice. And then somebody's going to have a beautiful vintage trailer. So what we've got here is a Westcraft Sequoia dual axle model, trolley down the center with all those uh, windows for light and air. This is probably one of my favorite manufacturers and styles of trailers um, that I've ever been uh, fortunate enough to rebuild. And I've actually done three or four of this model and, a, and probably three or four of the single axle model, the Coronado model of this as well. Um, this is actually a uh, client's of ours. Uh, we're gonna be starting on this in a couple months. So you guys are gonna get to follow the restoration on it. Uh, we just met with them a, a little bit ago and went over floor plan and some upgrades and amenities that they wanna add. Uh, to the bathroom area, which it, it had a, a toilet room from the factory originally, but not a full shower area. And so we're gonna add a full shower area to it. It's gonna be a really fun restoration. Definitely follow it. So the most spectacular part of a trolley top is all this headroom. I mean, it's, it's amazing. It gives you so much more light and air. And of course, for tall people, it's a great trailer. You don't feel all crunched in. Um, these windows all open so you get ventilation through the whole thing and of course like I said the light is just great to have. Um, great slope on the back, another uh, perfect example of a bread loaf trailer and Westcraft was just an amazing manufacturer. Uh, they really did a great job on all their aircraft constructed stuff and uh, you got a room for a full size or even a queen size bed at the back and then behind this wall is where the little toilet room was at and we're going to expand that into this room and create a full shower uh, stainless steel shower and bathroom in here it'll have a couch up front that converts to a bed and then the table pops right out of the wall over there so we're going to keep most everything original in here and original feel but we're going to do a, a, a small amount of modification just with the size of things we're going to probably wrap this countertop around here and have a little bar, like a serving bar over it so somebody can be cooking but still enjoy company in the living room. Um, in the end, this is going to be such a roadworthy, usable trailer and uh, any Westcraft I get, I can't wait to jump right in. So hopefully we're going to start this one real soon. It's going to be a great project. So next up on the list is another Westcraft. Uh, this one is a Westcraft Shasta. Um, this is a, a later year. So the wheel wells are a little bit different, dual axle on this one still, but not the Sequoia model. Um, trolley windows all throughout the top uh, for ventilation again and light. Um, just a great trailer. It's, a, it's neat to see two trailers from the same manufacturer, yet all the styling is so much different from one year to the next. And um, both dual axles, both same size, but you know, somebody came in, they wanted this type of a of a look. Somebody came in, they wanted this type of a look. Do they want a bathroom? Did they not want a bathroom? Westcraft was very um, known for customization. So you could go in and kind of pick out your finishes, decide what you wanted, and if you wanted a bathroom, if that was important to you or not. And um, I think that's where, you know, the different models came from. They offered different amenities with, with each one. Uh, this one's going to be great. It's one of three that's going to go to a, a, a ranch um, down in California, um, this is a, one owner that's doing three trailers with us. So this one unfortunately is taken, um, but again, it's going to be a great build and uh, it's going to have lots of years of use to come with their big family and getting to enjoy a, kind of a vacation retreat down south. So this is a 1936 home-built teardrop trailer. 
Uh, we were able to pick this up in um, Arizona. Uh, this one and another one, the one beside it, which I'll show you next. This one's pretty special though. It's a pre-war, um, was masonite originally, and then somebody skinned it in plywood. And all through the uh, center section on the roof was all canvas originally. Somebody put some metal on it over time, but it would have had a really, really old school pre-war look. And um, uh, the fact that it's a teardrop, very small trailer, but you can still stand up in it, um, is pretty awesome because it's, it's kind of like a full-size teardrop trailer. Uh, very easily uh, towable with a small car, and it has a bathroom in it, which is amazing. They fit everything into it. So somebody at their house was really thinking when they built this, and they built it to fit their circumstances and what they wanted and needed. So this is going to be a real special one when we dig into it. So I'd love to take you in for an interior tour. Uh, it's, it's pretty neat, right down to the original cushions and stuff that are in there. Um, but unfortunately, <laughs> We had to strap it together to get it here from Arizona, even on the flatbed. So if we take the straps off, um, we're kind of afraid at this point this wall might fall off. Uh, we don't want that to happen until we're ready to rebuild it. So we're gonna skip that today, uh, but when we dig into it, we'll make sure and show you every detail. So we've got a silver streak, um, an early silver streak, probably 48, 49. We didn't get a title with this one, so we're not exactly sure year. Um, but it's a small version, 18 foot version, which is very desirable. Um, both of these trailers, this one and the Teardrop came from Arizona and they're both up for sale or for restoration and sale um, through Flight Camp. Uh, this one would be really, really a, a great trailer as far as the usability of it. It's aircraft constructed, so it's all aluminum construction, uh, right down to the framing. And so that always is kind of a nice, uh, you, you know, you're taking the lumber, the wood aspect out of it. So it fits a lot of different climates. Um, this one was used for years and years as a uh, mobile kitchen. It used to pull into certain areas and somebody cooked out of it. So there's not much of an interior in it. It's pretty empty except for one countertop. Um, so clean slate. If somebody wants it, give us a call. We've got a, uh, a Roadmaster here. This is a really cool trailer because it's a canned ham trailer, wood constructed, wood framed. Um, a lot of people gravitate towards canned hams. They've got a great shape to them. Very uh, quintessential 50s vintage travel trailer look. Um, this one in particular is a little bit bigger version though. Um, it's almost 24 foot uh, from the tongue to the tail and uh, it has just about everything you need in there. It came factory with a bathroom in it and everything is in here to rebuild. Uh, the cabinets are in great condition, the countertops are in great condition. It just needs to be dismantled and it needs to have a little bit of love. Um, and after that you're going to have a great trailer. This one too is up for sale or restoration from Flight Camp and um, will definitely uh, be somebody's very special rally trailer for sure. So I would have to say uh, that this was probably in the higher end of um, canned hams at that time. In the 50s, definitely a cracked ice pattern on here. Um, really nice hardware though. This is all, uh, you know, higher end hardware that was used in higher end trailers of the, of the time. So I think that they were really trying to put out a good quality trailer. You know, they've got some nice finishes as far as the uh, mantle in the front. The light fixtures are, are really good quality. Um, and the combination of the birch and dug fur um, is, is kind of a really cool touch. A lot of uh, higher end trailers, you know, use that back then, Westcrafts and stuff like that. So a great little canned ham trailer, could have everything you want in it, full kitchen, living room area, and there's even a bathroom right around the corner. A nice area for a double or full size bed back there. And again, everything is uh, here to work off of, which is great. It's nice to have all the hardware and the hinges. You could even sand down these doors and, and, and cabinetry and use them uh, again, you know, once you get the structure solid. Um, so this was a great find. This was another trailer that was donated to us that was gonna be scrapped, um, but we'd love to find a home for it. So, uh, you know, definitely it's up for restoration or for sale. Um, so just contact the office and let us know if you're interested. So now we're to my most favorite trailer in the yard. This is a 1936 Hammer Blow. Um, this trailer was put out by the Hammer Blow Corporation that uh, made trailer kits that you could order through a magazine. Take them, take the kit in the, you know, get it in the mail and then buy all your material and build the trailer yourself. 
all stick built with fabric top. Really, really basic um, way of doing it. A lot of trailer manufacturers of the time started with doing kits um, that you could order out of magazines and then went on to manufacturing later. This one in particular, they made this unit. Um, it was made for a very special event. Uh, the, the, uh, the company put a lot of time, obviously, and, and engineering into it, and then it never took off. Um, obviously, people didn't order it or it was too much money, something, which happens a lot with businesses, you know, especially vintage travel trailer businesses back then. You know, there was over 3,000 manufacturers in, in the 40s alone, so they were coming and going very quickly. Um, this one in particular, though, was lost and a lot of people were searching for it for quite some time. We had a couple of renderings of it, some drawings of what it looked like and where it was presented at. and. Um, it was lost and then found not too long ago um, out in the uh, eastern desert of California. So uh, it, it kind of resembles a, a elephant of sorts. It's just a kind of a crazy flowing trailer and, and probably one of my favorite just odd bird one-off trailers um, out there. I can't wait to dig into this one, but I've got to do it right and I don't want to rush it. And so I'm digging up every bit of information I possibly can on it, and I want to make sure that this one is 100%. It's probably going to be one that we keep for quite a while, and um, so this will be a really fun restoration for you guys to follow. This company is actually still in business today. Just a side note, they turned into the Bulldog Company, which does um, accessories and hitches and couplers for travel trailers that are still on the road today and still being manufactured today. So, you know, it was a company that experimented with something. It didn't necessarily take off, but um, you know what? Lucky me. I got it and uh, I can't wait to redo it. It's going to be spectacular when it's finished. So the interior of the 1936 Hammer Blow is pretty awesome. Uh, this is an all steel trailer. That way they could uh, lead um, weld everything together and form it and that's why we get that crazy shape in the front. Uh, another really neat feature of this is they did like they would on a Model A and this was all a canvas insert in the roof. So that's something that we're going to definitely replicate. We want to make sure that we um, keep all those neat you know pieces that that they engineered and you know it's perfect for the era. What we're going to do though on this one is we're going to do the canvas top with the wood bows in here and then we're going to make the top retractable. So automatically you'll be able to push a button and that whole vinyl top will retract back and open up to the night sky which is going to be pretty incredible. Uh, back then uh, Doug fur was very readily available. Uh, vertical grain Doug fur panels. Now we can get them but um, they're new growth. So you see a lot of what they call footballs in them, where the uh, actual branch was growing out. And so it's not a clean pattern like the panels in here. So because it was so readily available though, I'm sure that they were counting their costs. And what they did is they got dug fur and then they stained it to look like a richer type of wood, like mahogany. Um, and that's why it's kind of a dark color. A lot of companies did that back then. They were using what they had to do it inexpensively, but they wanted to give a really um, high-end, um, expensive look. So they kind of, you know, played around with the finishes and stuff, and then added features like this. Um, we're going to definitely make this one a little swanky, though. It's got a, a really good feel to it with the windows and stuff. And then uh, we'll probably end up pulling this one with the Suburban, just because it has the the same look as the back of the Suburban. This is going to be kind of. Um, the project of a lifetime for me. I'm really excited for this one. So as soon as we jump into it, uh, you guys will see every detail front to back. So as we come around the other side of the boneyard, I know it's it's a lot. There's a lot to take in here. Um, we have another canned ham type trailer, wood framed, skinned with aluminum on the outside. This we believe was a home built also. Um, you know, in the 40s, 50s, a lot of people were, were working at, at manufacturing companies, would come home and build their own trailer. We see a lot of them pop up and we get a lot of questions about um, you know, brands and makes and models and stuff. Um, you know, we're not experts by any means on, on every single brand that was out there, but we've seen a, a lot of them come and go and a lot of indications about what would be a home built versus a manufactured trailer. So this will be a really cool trailer for somebody and in their own right, home built trailers are very kind of rare because they have touches 
inside that are very personalized. So um, they're pretty neat in their own right, and uh, this will be a really special trailer for somebody. It is for sale or for restoration um, through Flight Camp, so give us a call if you're interested. Uh, let's go take a peek inside. So unfortunately with this one, there's not much left to uh, salvage. Um, you know, there's some doors and hardware, really great hardware on the, uh, on the cabinets that we'll probably take off. And then keep the basic uh, floor plan the stove and the oven um, came with it, which is really great. We'll be able to rebuild that and put that in if, if a client wants, or it can go with it if it sells. Um, but you know, somebody used it for storage and it's seen a lot of water damage. And I think that there's been a pest or two in here living. Um, so unfortunately, this one will have to come clear down uh, to the frame and be rebuilt. But in the end, it'll be a really cool trailer. And again, a clean slate. So somebody could kind of work off of this one and uh, put their own personal touches to it. Uh, we've got a uh, early Spartanet. This is a, a tandem, is what they called it. Um, it's not a single axle, the shortest Spartanet they made. That's a 24 foot uh, single axle Spartanet, which we have one of those we'll show you in just a minute over here. But this is, uh, this is the smallest of the dual axle version of this trailer. Uh, this one was picked up over on the coast. So it's had some water damage in it. Um, it was used in like a little vacation fishing area. When we picked it up, it was actually 10 feet in the air on stilts. So we had to take the whole structure and the stilts and everything down and build hoist to, uh, to, to uh, put this up in the air while we took the stilts down and then drive a trailer underneath it and pick it up and strap it down and then get it back to bend. Uh, very sought after though, Spartans are always a great uh, trailer for anybody that wants to do a lot of traveling. You can modify them really well, you can add self-containment systems to them. And they're nice and big um, for a family. You can have kids and, and, and everything in here and have plenty of room for the whole family. So another great trailer that'll get restored here pretty soon. It is up for sale or restoration. Um, and uh, so if anybody's looking for a good candidate for a, a traveling trailer, let us know. So inside the Spartanet, as you can see, like I was saying, it had water damage. It was over the coast, so it, it uh, probably leaked for quite a few years. But because it's an aircraft constructed trailer, it's amazing that it isn't really falling apart you know, worse than it is. They were, they were built very well. Around the vents, of course, always a trouble spot. So unfortunately, it leaked in, in both vents. Um, some of the accessories have been taken out. You know, the couch has been removed. Um, but this one's got a full bathroom towards the back and then room for a queen size or a double bed in the back if you want to keep it original. So again, a really usable space. You can have kids in here, um, you know, a small family, great, great size for a small family um, and still easily towable. You can take it anywhere and it's a Spartan. What's better than that? Now I know what you all must be thinking. What in the world did Justin and Anna do? Well, let me explain. A, it didn't look like this when the guys picked it up. Uh, unfortunately, coming from Colorado to here, it kind of shook itself apart a bit. So when we purchased the trailer, it was in a solid structure uh, that we could still see the shape and everything of. And in looking at that, we discovered that we had one of the earliest Airstreams ever built um, that was being offered to us. This is a 1936 titled and tagged Airstream Flying Cloud Junior. This trailer would have been all masonite on the outside. We've got one photo of it, and um, believe it or not, there's a lot of this trailer that's salvageable. The whole interior has a complete, um, full, usable interior in it that just needs to be taken out, put on the bench, reconstructed, refinished, and then we'll template this whole side and the other side and just rebuild the structure and put all the original components back in. Sometimes I even get a little scared. When this showed up, I was kind of scratching my head a bit. But in the end, it's something that's going to be incredible to see out on the road. Hopefully it'll maybe end up in the Heritage Museum out at the Airstream factory. Uh, this is something that definitely needed to be salvaged and we're very fortunate to be the ones to get to do it. Okay, next in the lineup is a 1961 Holiday House 17-footer. Uh, this was um, not a self-contained unit. It didn't have a shower in it originally from the factory. Um, they made a lot of different options. You could have self-containment, you could have shower and bathroom in the back. Uh, this was a pretty basic base model, uh, so it didn't have a lot in it. Everything is in there, but not a whole lot is usable. So we're gonna have to take this one all the way down to uh, the studs on this one and redo it. It's got a lot of water damage in it. 
Believe it or not, when we picked it up way up in northern uh, Idaho, it was being used as a migratory bird coop. Um, geese would come in each year onto uh, the, the previous owner's property and she didn't want to shoo them out. Uh, she, she gave them a place basically, left the door open and gave them a place to live in there when it got cold at night. And it was kind of funny because we, we got contacted on, on it that she had it, but she had a time frame in order for us to come pick it up and it was after the geese took off for the year. She said, I can't ke uh, kick the geese out <laughs> uh, too early. And so we had to wait about three or four months for the geese to fly away and then we were able to go pick it up. Uh, a very desirable trailer, very mid-century, kind of a modern, you know, obvious design. Uh, the Holiday House was made by uh, the Harry and David um, Fruit of the Month Club uh, company. And um, just like the Geographic that we have in the showroom, uh, same company but just completely different design. They made uh, a few of these, several of them actually, um, in this style and they made them up to 24 feet with a dual axle. This one's a single axle 17 footer and it would love to find a new home. So if you're interested in a Holiday House, give us a call. This is another very special trailer. Um, really rare to be honest with you um, we've seen an ad for one uh, but that's it nobody's ever seen another one it's a 1936 albatross um, kind of resembles an air float in a way with this whole kind of front thing um, pre-war thus the masonite on it and uh, just crazy window uh, engineering and and the way that they open and stuff uh, but everything's intact amazing that a masonite trailer uh, survived this long. Um, we met a guy at a rally about a year and a half ago. He said he had it and he had it stored kind of undercover in a barn and wanted us to have it. So we were able to go down and purchase it. And um, it's another one that is for sale or for restoration through flight camp. But I hope I really get to see this one restored and get to do it myself. It's, it's a really special trailer. Um, very desirable shape and size. Could be towed with a hot rod very easily because of the size of it. And everything is here to work off of. The interior right down to the cushions um, are still on the inside. The stove top is in there and everything. So replicating or salvaging isn't gonna be a problem and you're gonna have a really neat, rare pre-war trailer on this one. We were able to identify this one because we were having some trouble with some different features on it, but uh, we were able to identify it by getting help from a very good friend of ours, uh, Tim Heinz, back east in Florida. Um, he's invaluable for information on manufacturers and years and stuff. And uh, we sent a picture over to him and within minutes he called us back and, and sent us the, uh, the advertisement that he has in his archives that said Albatross and it is this exact trailer. So um, very, very cool of him to help us out on it and identify it. And again, a very rare trailer and I hope to see it done someday soon. So the interior of the Albatross, um, it's been sitting out in the weather for a little bit. Uh, we, we anticipate having to tear the whole thing down, so I'm not too worried about the water damage it's got in here because we're going to tear it all the way down anyway. But everything is here. You can see all the basic uh, floor, print, floor plan and footprint. All of the handles and knobs are all usable, all push button, very art deco, uh, just that perfect 1930s look. Um, not to mention the two things I really love about this trailer that we're going to try and salvage is the decoupage that was done in it. Probably in the late 30s, early 40s, these decoupage uh, prints were put on the cabinets. And then I love that the original flooring was underneath the carpet. You can see a little bit of it right here. This is a perfect example of 1930s marmoleum. Uh, so we'll get something that resembles that. We want to make sure and keep it very period correct. And again, uh, this may be scary to some, but to us it's preservation. This is a piece that people need to see uh, down the road and need to see it for what it was in 1936. So we're, we're really excited to do this one. Um, again, it is available for sale or restoration. It's gonna be a very special piece when it's done. Uh, we just hope to get to get our hands on it a little bit. So uh, give us a call if you're interested for sure. Earlier down the line, we showed you a, a Spartanet tandem, a dual axle model of the Spartanet. Same shape, but stretched and has a, a dual axle underneath it. This is a 24 foot single axle version of that. It's 1948, a little earlier. Uh, these were great trailers um, for, for the easily towable, easily uh, travelable trailers. 
Uh, the other sizes, the bigger ones, they were more for stationary. They were put in a park and you, you pretty much lived in them, hooked directly to the utilities. This one was more of a traveling trailer. It was smaller and easier to manage. Um, typically, it, you know, originally in 48, they didn't have self-containment systems either, but you could easily unhook this one and travel with it a lot easier than the bigger ones back then. Um, great trailer. We're using it for storage right now. Um, it's an empty shell. It has a full interior that goes with it that's all original and in really good shape, but it's all dismantled and just kind of sitting in the trailer right now. It is titled and uh, kind of ready to roll. Um, we would love to either sell this one or restore it for somebody. Spartanettes, we've done a handful of them and they're a great trailer. And uh, it could definitely uh, come back to life uh, new panels on the outside and give it a polish and then do the interior and you'd have a pretty awesome trailer. Um, a very desirable size as well. Well, we're almost to the end of the boneyard and uh, we got two left. We've got the Vagabond here and we've got a 1945 Cozy Coach. Uh, this was uh, given to us by a friend of mine up in Washington. Uh, he found it years ago and kind of started a restoration on it. And unfortunately, other projects have taken priority so it's kind of sitting out here getting weathered. Um, we'd love to find it a good home. It is for sale or for restoration and it is titled. Um, but for a 1945 uh, travel trailer, that's kind of a rarity because in 45, when the war was still going on, all of the supplies were going toward wartime effort. And so this trailer being manufactured was probably for wartime housing, um, or in a camp that they had quite a, quite a bit across the United States for, for uh, wartime families. Uh, this one is Masonite and then it had a padded leatherette top on it originally and um, it does have an interior in it, kind of hard to get into, we'll peek through the windows here and there, um, but it does have an interior in it that needs to be dismantled and reworked. But it could be a really cool trailer. It's a, a bread loaf style, so the back kind of rolls down. And we've got some original black and white photos that'll go with the trailer when it goes to its new owner um, that the manufacturer put out at the time. And it was, a, it was a pretty special campaign. Alma and Cozy Coach and a couple of other ones uh, did this, worked with the government to do these camps. And most likely, this was made alongside hundreds of other ones that looked exactly like it and then given to uh, soldiers and their families. So a very kind of a special trailer and uh, it really needs to be saved. So please, uh, if you're interested in a, in a neat bread loaf, give us a call and uh, it needs a new home. The last one we got for you today in the Boneyard, we're pretty packed out here. Um, that's why this one's parked in here. We don't have much room anymore. Um, is uh, the Vagabond, 1950s Vagabond. This is a 32 footer, I believe. And uh, this is another one just like the Anderson that we started with that's gonna be going into a vintage travel trailer park here uh, locally in the area. So this one unfortunately is not for sale. Um, it's already been taken and we're going to dismantle the interior on it and build kind of a custom rental unit out of it on the inside. It'll keep the aesthetic and the feel of a 1950s Vagabond, but it's gonna be a little simplified uh, with a bigger bathroom and bigger sleeping accommodations for a small family. It's gonna be a great rental when we're done with it. So the interior of the Vagabond, um, everything's here to work off of, which is really great. A lot of cabinets can be salvaged, you know, just for uppers and stuff like that. We are gonna open up the floor plan a little bit, take some of the dividing walls out and make the bathroom bigger and make the bedroom a little bit bigger. Make it more usable for a rental style and a small family. Um, it'll be direct plumb, so it won't have self-containment, but it's gonna have um, you know, a bigger hot water heater, a nice couch in the front, and a dinette area here. And it'll be a, it'll be a great rental. Um, unfortunately, it all needs to be taken out. As you can see, this whole roof here is kind of slanting this direction, which means it's gotten substantial water damage in the roof which means this is all bowed and kind of falling to one side. Well, we need to get to the electrical anyway to make everything safe. Uh, we we want to make sure that for years to come, this is a good, safe, rentable unit um, for anybody to use. And so we're going to take everything out of it, clear down the studs and kind of start over. Keep the look and feel of a Vagabond, but make it more uh, usable as far as the rental goes. So if you're looking for something in particular, definitely give us a call. And if we don't have it, we can probably find it. So we, we love to place these with people, find good homes for them, and see them come back to life. 
Stay tuned to our YouTube channel to keep up to date with all of our projects. Don't forget to subscribe and receive notices so you don't miss a thing.